This week we're talking about some things to bear in mind when setting up a video editing studio and showing how you can go from a completely empty room to something that's really good for making and editing films in. So, let's take a look. Hello, my name is Simon Cade and this is DSLR Guide. So this week my brother left home to go to college, so that meant we had a free bedroom. So what I decided to do was to move out of my bedroom and my bedroom would become a studio and my I would then be in my brother's bedroom. So what I did is I essentially stripped out the whole room, completely emptied it, it's, it's this room by the way, and then I put everything back in a much better way so that I could firstly edit videos in here, but also I wanted to be able to store all of my equipment and of course have this set of filming these episodes. So let's take a look at some of the things I did, some of the research that it took to try and get the best setup and see what we learned from this. So the first thing to look at is my editing setup. You can see I've just got a simple chair and desk setup with a 27 inch iMac. Pause the video right now if you want to see the specs. And as always, if you look in the description, you'll find a link to the blog post, which will have all of the links to any of the products that I mention in this video. But on that desk, I also have an Apple keyboard with a third party number pad extension, a trackball mouse, a pen tablet for doing graphics, my Lexar card reader, some speakers on some stands that my brother made for me, a tiny keyboard for doing music, and my external hard drives. So as a video editor, your disc setup is very important. So the way I've done things, because I haven't really talked about this in an episode before, I thought I'd just very quickly skim over what my setup is. So I've got a 250 gig SSD, which holds the operating system, and then a two terabyte hard drive, which holds all of the media and all of my projects and basically everything else. And both of those back up with Time Machine to my four terabyte external hard drive. Now I've recently had to delete quite a lot of old footage because that two terabytes really is filling up very quickly. So I plan to get an eight terabyte Thunderbolt drive pretty soon, but I'll talk a lot more about that in a completely separate video. Now the next important thing to talk about is my audio setup, because as an editor you'll definitely find yourself working with sound, whether it's doing sound design or just listening to audio, but then also I often record audio in here as well as doing like a lot of general music stuff, so I do want to have a good audio setup. So I did some research to find out how to make the most out of the room, whether it's for recording, mixing, or editing audio. So the first thing you'll notice is that my speakers are placed at ear level, and they also form an equilateral triangle between me and the two speakers. So this is what I've heard is the best setup. And the other thing I did is I put them in the center of the two side walls and slightly away from that front wall. So you'll see from the diagram what I mean, but essentially this is a much better place to put your speakers than in a corner of a room and it's all to do with the way that the sound bounces off the walls. And I also added some acoustic foam on the walls, and if you look in the blog post, you'll see some more information about where to place those. But the idea here is that, again, we're reducing those reflections, which gives you a much cleaner audio quality when you're listening or recording sound. Now, I could have went a lot further with the acoustic treatment of this room, adding more foam and bass traps in the corners, but for me, this is not just a recording studio. It's also somewhere where I have to film these episodes and store equipment. So the acoustics of the room was not the only priority. So I brought in this cabinet, which I got secondhand from a furniture store. And that is where I store all of my equipment, which I need to be able to access very regularly. So I've got my cameras, my lenses, my audio equipment, and some other little bits and pieces, which are really accessible so I can get to them really quickly. And then on the second drawer is some things I use a bit less frequently, like LED batteries, my handheld rig, my secondary viewfinder, and on the bottom shelf is things which I rarely use, including a case of stuff that I should probably just get rid of. Now over here we have some more room for stuff behind the DSLR guide table. This is where most of the lighting gear lives, in the suitcase. Now this is where I have my LED lights, reflectors, gels, black wrap, and sandbags, and a couple of other little bits and pieces. Now behind my desk I have things which are too big to put away. So this is light stands, tripods, monopods, and my boom pole. And then finally I have these drawers which are just for general things that I don't use very often but I still want to keep. So I've got stuff like my reflector cases and stationery and just little things like that which I really don't use that often. And I quickly like to mention this charging station which allows me to charge all of the batteries from all of my cameras and LED lights and all that sort of stuff all in one place which is a really good way of doing it. 
and then I have a separate extension lead which is where I connect the computer, speakers, external drive and that extension lead has something called surge protection which certainly sounds like a good thing. Now I don't know how well it works but I'm happy to go with that just to be safe. And the last thing you might want to include in your studio is somewhere where you can actually film stuff. So the most common ones are probably a green screen studio or an infinite white background like in those Apple commercials to have a setup which has the lights and the background all ready to go so that you can regularly shoot in there and just leave it set up. Now that sort of thing does really take up a lot of space so for me that wasn't really an option although it would be great if I could have a green screen studio one day. But for me I do have this set which I needed to keep clear. So that was just something else to take into consideration when I was looking at where to put my desk. In terms of the audio stuff, I was thinking, well, I can't put any foam on this wall, for example, because I'm using it for the set. So it's worth thinking, do I wanna have a space where I can film stuff? But for many of you, I'm sure you would be totally happy with just having a desk and somewhere to store equipment. So hopefully this has been helpful for you guys to get some ideas about what you might wanna do for your place where you edit your videos or work on your videos. I know that I've really been enjoying having a special space where I can say this is where I'm going to be doing my filmmaking and then also just to have that equipment really well organized that really helps when I want to go out on a shoot because I can just quickly grab stuff from the different shelves and it makes it a lot more efficient when I want to pack up and go. So speaking of shoots I have just recently uploaded a video to my Cade Visuals channel which I'll put a link on the screen as well as in the description and this is my most recent project that I've been working on. It's a short film of my brother who, like I said, just went to university. And it's just a really short mini doc about running. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of you guys have been asking about whether you can see some of my work other than DSLR Guide. So if that is something you're interested in, then please do check out that link in the description. But that's it for this week and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.